hello and welcome to Versus Live. I'm Ross Miriam. And I'm Corey Ballmeister. And we have Justin in the booth. Hi, Justin. Hi, Justin. <laughs> He's been taken after his mentor, Rob. Yeah, he catches yeah. on quick. I didn't, I didn't yeah, expect that to be that quick. <laughs> that's, good. that's good. We... That's the that's the bulk of the job right there. If you can nail that, I mean, that's why Dan isn't in here very often. He has not figured that out yet. <laughs> we're gonna be getting a lot more Dan after, after this because I'm gonna be on the road for a few shows. So. All right, all right, I see. We'll, we'll make sure he gets it down. <laughs> He's, no, he's kind of stubborn, though. Yeah, he's not going to do yep. it. Yep. <laughs> Justin is new here, so please give him a nice welcome in the <laughs> chat. He will be taking your questions, comments, concerns, and burns. Make sure you tag at Star City Games as well so he can see them and send his favorites over to us. He loves pina I mean, I'm coladas. still going to be yelling at you. because yeah, okay, yeah. gonna... okay, so Rob, Rob will also be there. <laughs> yeah. But... but Justin loves long walks on the beach, pina coladas, and taking questions. So he was yeah. a perfect fit for this job, naturally. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Those are literally the only requirements. Yeah, it's a, it's a really weird uh, uh, hiring dynamic. Yeah. yeah. You would be surprised how many pina coladas we have on a regular basis. Why do you think I'm always so energetic? <laughs> Here at the Star City Game Center. There's a lot of pina coladas. Okay. Uh, we are continuing diving into Theros Beyond Death Standard because mm -hmm. it is awesome. It is. Yeah, we've been having a blast with it. Yeah. yeah. Standard has been poop soup. <laughs> for about six months. Yeah, it, it, it's went through a lot of shifts. Like, you know, I mean, last None standard did. last standard season when you have three banning, so we essentially had three new standards, and the same kind of thing kept happening. It was like, we would try these new decks, be like, oh, maybe this deck's good again, and be like, oh, Nissa's is still the best. And be like, oh, maybe this is good again, maybe Nissa's is still the best. Well, Nissa is still really good, but I think there are a lot more effective answers to deal with it. So I think uh, I think the format is saved, yeah, at least for now. Powerful cards to contend with it as well. You know, you don't have to literally just answer the card. You know, you can play things that sort of compete with it yeah. on a mono on mono basis. So yeah. that's really nice to see because having to have the answer every single time is just you know it's just not going to happen. Like, yeah, you you never want to be the person who is forced to have the right answer at the right time over and over again. Exactly, you just want to be the person asking the questions. Yep. Um, and I mean that's that's a that's a good point why just control decks in general in these really proactive formats or kind of any format just isn't up to snuff right now because having to have all these answers instead of being proactive is usually a little rough. Yeah, very yeah. very tough. Mm -hmm. That said, you are playing Nissa in your first deck today. Yes, yes. Hey, I, I, I didn't say it's for sure beatable. We're going to make sure to still test. Yeah. I think it's very important to not just banish Nissa from our standard, because if you're going to be playing in a standard tournament, either on the ladder, FNM, PTQ, Richmond, whatever, you got to know how to beat this card. And uh, it, you know, I, I, th I think we're bringing a good tool to beat a good Nissa deck here. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm that tool is going to be mono red aggro. Yep. This is a list that was brought to us by Aaron Barrich. She uh, likes to play mono red. I I've, I've heard oh, heard that. Interesting. Uh, okay. So should be a pretty good list. Yeah. It's a little bit bigger than most red lists I see. There's not a lot of things going on super low on the curve. Only fervent champion and shock in the one mana slot. Yep. Uh, we still have rimrock knight. Not a, and uh, actually a small splash for Ritzmati reveler. Okay. But we're going a little bigger with phoenix of ash, a card I like quite a bit. We haven't seen a ton. Um, it just gives you a little bit more staying power. It's a really good mana sink. Yeah. Uh, you, if you get an Ember Cleave on it, you can start pumping it. You know, if you need a second hit there, we do have Ember Cleave at the top end. Yeah. Or Torbrins. To... I really love Escape in these kind of decks like Mono Red, but Escape is a mechanic whether you're playing Limited in New, New Jersey, just playing on the ladder, or, you know, transitioning it into Standard. Escape cards have diminishing returns, but in a deck where you use all your resources and you don't have a way to rebuild, like without experimental frenzy and stuff, having these escape mechanics is a nice way to have card advantage without actually having true card advantage. Yeah. And yeah. the, the opportunity cost of putting this card in your deck is so low. The front half is quite good still. So you're mm -hmm. flying haste with some fire breathing, and then uh, you know if it dies, it can come back. So it gives you that staying power. Uh, but you don't have to like jump through hoops. You know, you yep. can pitch it with Rick's Mighty Reveler if you want to get the escape and get a little bit of value that way. But it's not like you're playing it just for the escape half. Both halves are good. Yep, I agree. So before we get to uh, the deck that I'm playing, I really still want a Carnox chair, and Ross forgot. So don't forget, we are sponsored by Star City Games and Carnox chairs. He won't be getting a chair in his stocking here for his uh, late got, January stocking. I got so distracted by trying to make sure that I mentioned Justin. It, yeah. It threw me off. Yeah, it was yeah. Not, not my regular problem. I know, that's okay. Now, 
But head on over to carnox.com slash SCG. You'll get 10% off your purchase. Might be a chair, might be two chairs. Yeah. And one for you and one for me, maybe. Yeah. Probably not after this. Not anymore. I mean, Carnox, Carnox tunes in to every single versus live for the first one minute. And after we say it, they're just like, okay, good, good. <laughs> and they, they roll away. But now. Just Mr. Birds of yeah, Carnox chairs. Exactly. But yeah, now excellent. now he's just had his finger over the red button. He's like, he's not saying it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's actually like a trap floor here. <laughs> yeah. It opens. I drop down. <laughs> Somebody else slides in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, so now that we got that out of the way, I am going to be playing a Bant Ramp deck, something that we have seen before here, but we have new tools. Our top end is Dream Trawler and Elspeth Conquers Death. Um, seeing if, you know, this is still the best Nissa shell, um, Bant has been something that's been very good. Uh, this was a list uh, brought to my attention by Andrea Mangucci, uh, a longtime friend of the show. Uh, I really liked a few things, and a few things that I don't like. I don't think Deputy is quite good enough yet uh, in the format, but I wanted to try it out. Um, I know Elspeth, Conquer's Death, and Dream Trawler. I know those cards are nice, and I still love those. The top end might be a little high on this deck, but uh, we're going to see if we can keep up with a really aggressive deck. Yeah, uh, and you know, Deputy should help a little bit. Even if it dies at some point, it'll buy you a lot of time in this yeah. matchup. So maybe, mm. maybe that's why he wanted it. Felt like he was a little weak to aggressive strategies. Yeah, and I mean, the sideboard definitely shows that. Yeah. Like, game one, I, I really I really don't have high hopes on uh, taking this down. But that that's kind of Mono Red's MO, right? Like, have very good game ones. Get a little bit worse post-board. but scrappy to steal one of the post-board games. Exactly. Move on. Exactly. So we're going to try to get scrappy to win game one here. I got the marbles. You're going first. Yeah, being you know, on the play here is going to help quite a bit. Yeah, that's, you just threw the last match on Tuesday because you knew you needed the play here, right? Exactly. <laughs> that's the kind of. All right, we're going to get in at chat. Let's uh, let's play some good games today. All good right. news, Corey. Mangucci's actually here in chat too. Is he? Perfect. Perfect. We love Mangu here. Make sure to tell Corey every time he screws up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I will be mulliganing this horrible hand. All right. Well, we got lands. Check. <laughs> we got uh, a little bit of accelerant with a little bit of late game. This seems like a, a nice uh, a nice hand. So we're going to be taking your questions. Don't forget to tag at Star City Games in case you didn't mention. I, I feel like you messed the whole intro. Up, I so. got that. I okay, got we got that. Star City Games. All right, Great. perfect. So let's get some questions from Rob. Yeah, while we're doing I do those. have one right now. All right. Uh, Sargon Vito wants to know, why are the, aren't there any Uro in your uh, ramp list? Uro, Uro is one card I just don't think is good. I could see one as just a way to <clears throat> have some of that uh, late game inevitability, but I just really think Uro is a bust, to be honest. Like, I I think there's certain decks that's going to be good, and I think it's more Sultai shells, to be honest, than a Bant shell. I think you have to choose between... I don't know, that and like Elspeth Conquer's death or something. I'm just not a big believer of the card. Yeah. I think what ended up happening with this card, or what will end up happening, yep. is that the front half and the back half go with the two different kinds of decks. Yeah. The front half is a very much just a ramp card. Yeah. But the back half doesn't fit that well into ramp decks because you don't fill your graveyard that well. Yeah. Just ramp decks. I think you have to have Cavaliers to want to yeah. play Uro. And uh, right now, I can't afford to play Nissa, Elspeth Conquer's Death, Dream Trawler, Hydroid Crisis, and Cavaliers at top end. So it's basically it's it's basically a concession to me thinking Elspeth, me and Mangucci for uh, the general idea, thinking that Elspeth Conquer's Death is a better five drop than Cavalier. Um, and we'll see. We shall see. Okay. This is definitely a keep, and I just have to decide between these two cards which one I want to just pick. Just ship them both. Just ship them both to the bottom. All right. Let's get this party started. We will start on a Temple of Malice. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think this card is worth keeping. I'm going to be much more plentiful. Do we want that? I could probably be a little greedy and put uh, land to the bottom here. Okay. I am going to play Rick's Monty Reveler. Okay. We're going to discard our Phoenix. The value. It escapes for four mana and three other cards, right? Pass the turn. That Perfect. was the worst possible draw. Good, good. Um, Let's get a Paradise Druid down and pass to you. Yep. 
That's just not going well. Uh, <laughs> Fervent Champion and attack for three. Okay, three. Yep, that's not a knight to pump. Paradise Druid's a little too valuable for me, so we're just going to take three, go to 17. Uh, I'll uh, bolt okay. the rush, want something after. All right, 15. Box. You're 15, you're up. All right. That was a pretty good draw ish, not having to take damage from our lands. It's going to be a big deal in this matchup. So let's get the old Tom Brady here, the QB, and uh, hit you for four. Brings me to 16. All right, your turn. Oh, you're at 15. I'm at 15, correct. 15 to 16. Uh, uh, Fervent Champion. Yep. Shock to Paradise Druid. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. QB is going to do a little damage, I hope, here. Um. All right. Well, I kind of want to be able to double spell here. We're definitely going to attack. 12. Um. I think I kind of want to just ramp. All right, we're going to take two to do so. 13. We're going to Growth Spiral. Temple. Oof. Did not want to see Untapped Land Deputy. Yeah, yeah, that would have been good. All right, uh, Teferi here is interesting because I think Teferi is actually quite bad in this matchup. Just you really don't have anything great to bounce. Your three drops, your Torbins, you know, those are a little bit better. Um, uh, I was I was talking about this card with the sheer plan of putting it on bottom, but I actually think it's okay. So pretend you didn't hear any of that, okay? <laughs> All right, your turn. And that should just about do it. You got the combo locked up? Still afraid of the cleave. The sword could be coming down here pretty soon. Play Room Rock Knight. That's a lot better. Pass the turn. I like that. I like that. Okay. So, now what do we want to do this turn? I think I want to play said to fairy I was talking about. Um, now definitely one of these two drops. I probably don't care about your loot that much. So we're going to put this back and we're going to sack Fabled Passage. All right. Get an island here. Would you like to cut, good sir? You're good. <laughs> cut. I want to play another Teferi. We're going to bounce Rimrock Knight and get in there for four. Eight. Your turn. Just trying to tempo you out now, kind of finish it with QB. Uh, I'm just trying to make Mangu proud, you know? I mean, every time he plays Bant Ramp decks, it's just, it wins him thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars. He makes it look so easy, so graceful. Just trying to uh, do the same. So thanks for helping me out by only playing two lounge. You're welcome. You're a good friend. <laughs> Maybe you need a scarf, too. A scarf? Just, oh, just, God. Just like Gucci. That's why um, I haven't won an Invitational <laughs> or, a, or a Pro Tour or anything. God, I'm so foolish. Let's play Rick Smotty Reveler. Okay. You know, I blame the fact that I don't wear a lot of scarves on the fact that I live in the U.S. and I'm so used to everything being cold inside. So I'm not freezing when I walk in. Mangucci, when he walks into a Vegas hotel, he's like, this is unreal cold. And then he has to wear a scarf, and then the scarf gives him powers. I mean, you're from, like, North Dakota. I figured you'd be used to the cold. Yeah, but that's why I'm wearing shorts right now, and it's winter, quote-unquote, in Roanoke. Okay. I guess that's third fervent third. champion. Attack to fairy, make them all tutus. All right. We'll kill one. We don't care about Teferi at all. Pass turn. All right. Pisteus is very sure you could pull off basketball short scarf, scarf combo. Oh, don't threaten me with a good time. All right. We'll attack. Four. And it's jellyfish time. Four, six. Draw three. Ready to do to 16. All right. Your turn. 16. All right. And our hand is quite good. And... Best I can do is, is deal with one of them. Ten. Contend me. Yeah, I've got Boulder Rush Ember Cleave, but 
that's that's a ten ball plus you can uh block something block yeah. multiple things, yeah. You you could only take four if you really wanted to. Yeah. I had a nice follow up of any of those plays. Mm. Yeah, you just got stuck on lines, plain and simple. Yeah, I kept a two-lander. I, I, I actually scryed a Fervent Champion to the top, the first one. Okay. Because I thought, like, yeah, I'll probably like, find lands. I was reveling the next turn, and I think I'll have time to to get it out. Yeah. And I just drew second Embercleave. You know, you played Questing Beast when I pitched the Phoenix. Yeah. I think if I had just scryed this to the bottom, I would have drawn second Embercleave, pitched that, had the Phoenix, hit third land a little earlier. Uh, yeah. Still not sure I would have won because I would have missed the third lane anyway. And but... I did have a pretty good draw. Um, yeah, I didn't. Questing Beast is a. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah I, I think Questing good. Beast is a, a card that was starting to not get a lot of love because of Wicked Wolf. Wicked Wolf basically put Questing Beast in the dirt. But um, now that now that Wicked Wolf is not being played because there's not a lot of good food synergies anymore, yeah. I think Questing Beast is going to get a lot better. Plus, ways to attack through uh, um, like Dream Trawler, you know, be able to still pressure Planeswalkers and stuff. I think Questing Beast is going to get a little help. That's for sure. It's definitely a good card. So. Yeah. Well, I was the one getting scrappy for game one, not Ross. So now we're going to head to the sideboard where it's almost assuredly better for me. So see that. Hello, and welcome back to Versus Live. Sideboarding here in our match between Mono Red Aggro and Bant Ramp. On my side, I'm getting... I'm Bant Life Gain now. Oh, you're Bant Life Gain now? <laughs> yeah, the tra transformational sideboard. Yeah. But yeah. Normally, I'm the one with a lot going on. Yeah. You're the one with only a few, so we, we yeah. switched that up as well. Uh, essentially, my sideboard plan is getting a little bit more robust, trading in these shocks that don't have a lot of good targets for lava coils that can take out Questing Beast. Um, you know, With the help of Torbrun, can even take out a pretty big Hydra Crisis. Yeah. Um, so uh, not a bad card to have here. Also bringing in a couple of Chandras to help, you know, really be a heavy hitter. And it's pretty good in this match. If you don't have a lot of ways to directly remove it and if yeah. you're attacking it, it's going to deal you a ton of damage. You're drawing me some extra cards. And I kind of can attack with Questing Beast if I'm trying to conserve my life total. Because I yeah. have to deal damage with that. I'm pretty sure that's how it works, yeah. right? Is it not a May? I, I think you have to deal. I've never clicked yes whenever <laughs> I've played on Arena to deal damage to Planeswalkers. Or maybe I've always clicked yes because it's so subconscious. that. But it, I'm pretty sure I've it never. Not, it's not yeah, a May. I, I think you just have to deal damage. That's... I think maybe you get to choose if there's two Planeswalkers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but, it's a target Planeswalker. But, yeah. Uh, this is the only one I've got, so. Yeah, every time I'm attacking with Questing Beast and there's two Planeswalkers, I never truly notice because I'm skipping around my house <laughs> just so happy that I get all this food, so. Why do birds <laughs> yeah. suddenly appear? <laughs> every time QB is here. <laughs> just like me. Uh, so the, we got one extra slot we got to cut, and Rick's Mighty Reveler, I think, is the weakest creature in this matchup. Yeah. The spectacle half of it is really good in any matchup where they're trying to play a lot of removal. You're playing a matchup where you're going over the top of me, so it's not particularly relevant. The body's inefficient as a result, so uh, just not a great card in the matchup. I would take out more if I had a better sideboard, yep. uh, but right now only have uh, good cards to bring in to bring out one. Okay, and um, from my end, uh, looking at uh, Manguchi's sideboard, I... I can just deduce that this is a matchup that we were a bit afraid of, you know, just because there's <laughs> oh. so there's so many cards you really need to take out here. And Elspeth Conger's death, whenever this card is bad, Teferi is usually bad as well, because these work very well with each other, as well as deputies. You need something to return early that dies early. That's why Teferi and Elspeth Conger's death, you know, are, are great buddies. Um, but I don't have a ton of great targets for you, or at least I don't want to be spending five mana to do so. I'd rather have the great targets be decreed. To fairy bouncing any of your one through one or twos is bad, and that's you know what I need to be doing is soaking up your early damage. Bouncing the new red devotion card, Annex, is Annex. the best target you have. Annex and Torbrin, and Torbrin's not even great because you're usually gaining something when you play it. it. It doesn't have a come into play ability, but it might as well have. <laughs> uh, deputies just being able to be dealt with with a removal spell, and then you likely get your haste creatures back. Not very good either. And now we're bringing in the fun stuff. We got Knight of Autumns and Tolsmere to just gain a ton of life. The mode on this is almost always going to be gain life. Maybe if I want to play, I, ha I have a comfortable life. Making a 4-3 is reasonable. And then some ways to deal with creature. But Tolsmere uh, is really the, the the new MVP of this matchup. So. Yeah, that card is something else against aggressive X. Yep, yep. Multiple bodies, a removal spell, and life. It's, it's everything you could ever 
ever want. Exactly, them. exactly. Except like hex proof to yourself or something yeah. as well. Like maybe lifelink. I don't know. Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right, you got any questions while we shuffle up for our second game here? I do. What do we uh, got? Swell fellow wanted to know what do you think about a cavalcade, a red cavalcade list? I just really hate the really underpowered one drops you have to play to make that card work. Mm -hmm. uh, like I get, like you know, it's cool with Torbrin, Squirt Spitter. You get some synergies there, but you've got to play some really weak creatures to real to make that card worth it. Yep. And there are now like <clears throat> good cards that fill out the rest of the curve, which is why I like this list. Yeah. Yep. Phoenix of Ash and along and Anax alongside Bone Crusher Giant and Rimrock Knight and Ember Cleave are those are just powerful cards, but yep. also have the potential to run people over when you curve out smoothly. Exactly. So I think the reason why we're not seeing a ton of mono red as like the top tier one decks is because there's not those one and two drops that are insane, which I think is good. I, yeah. I think that's good for the format, but like Earthshaker Kenra, you know, Bowman Goblin Courier. Guide, Bowmat, you know, these one drops and two drops that are just very good, even late game. Um, those are what makes mono red insane. But I love uh, Aaron's reasoning uh, on her tweet about this deck. It's just like, well, the ones and true two drops, you know, for lack of a better word, are not good. <laughs> Aaron may have used a little bit more colorful uh, language <laughs> on that. Um, but she recognized that the, the higher end of these red cards are actually good. So instead yeah. of trying to play into this weird mono red mold that we've seen for so many years, Aaron's just like, forget it. Break the mold. Let's, let's play some bigger stuff and see if you can compete. And I think it's a much better deck because yeah. of it. Very, yeah. Yeah, completely agree. You don't want to be fitting a square peg into a round hole. Yeah. <laughs> also, work. would you consider this a chonky red deck? <laughs> it, it, I would say this deck, it, it's kind of chonky. It is pretty chonky. You know, it's a similar curve too, right? I think we both owe uh, Todd Anderson like 15 cents for saying that on air though. I'll so. gladly pay the royalty. <laughs> okay, okay. <Gladly. laughs> All right, let's take one more question, Rob, before we uh, get this going, if you got one. All right. Uh, Gandalf wanted to know, what do you think about the meta so far in the beginning of Theros Beyond Death Standard? Do you like it? I do like it. Yeah, I from so far from what I've played, I've played against a ton of different decks. I, I think, of course, that the metagame is going to narrow like every standard does after a while. But for right now, I mean, we have sacrifice decks that are viable. We have devotion. We have blue-white uh, control shells. We have ramp shells. You know, we have mono red popping up right now. I mean, that's that's already five decks that I can consider either knocking on tier one's doors or tier one. And that's just right off the top of the head, yeah. I, you know? No, I think you, you have good diversity you have uh you know not a singleton dominant deck it seems like mm -hmm. and you have good gameplay so exactly. right now yeah I, I think this format looks really good standard is probably as good as it has been in about a year right? yeah oh and as for hero i how could i forget yeah. the card that i'm almost or the deck i'm almost most excited about you know yeah, yeah. Uh, ravnica Ale since ravnica allegiance standard when we had a model blue and sultai mid-range and, and a couple other cool archetypes as per yeah. control is it phoenix boros Agro? Yeah. that was probably the last really good standard yeah. and then this is right up there with that yep i'm with you great questions everybody keep them coming in and let's get to the games uh, uh, i can't keep a one lander with all threes and fours Mine is also questionable. Um, my mana base isn't great. It's really top end. I think I got a mulligan as well. Uh, it's just, it's close. It's close, and but... You're really relying on that Knight of Autumn. To yeah. A lot of work in that hand. And Knight of Autumn, honestly, is such a medium card. I think it's it's finally at the max medium stage where there's, like, enough enchantment decks that are actually worth removing that people can maybe consider it. But I still think Knight of Autumn is just not a, a constructed playable yeah. magic card. You know? I mean, it certainly is constructed playable when you need, you know, a disenchant that's, you know, you got a little bit of body attached to it. Yeah, but usually a disenchant is just better you know like yeah. for two mana and stuff like i i've always been a pretty big critic on night of autumn even though i see it in so many sideboards because it just makes sense right in like in any green white deck but I, I i do normally not like it but i think it's at its best possible spot yeah. in this meta game the, the big issue i think for it is that we haven't seen a lot of small aggro decks that yeah. really you know get hampered by the two one that gains four life you know the, the even this red deck is going big enough to ignore it it's mm -hmm. an okay card still um, especially because it can, you know, destroy an Ember Cleave or, or a couple other things. But yep. um, it it really wants to see decks like that low curve mono red deck, um, to that you can get a you know, clean one for one trade off of it that still gains you four life and buys you a ton of time. Yep, I'm with you. 
Okay, reasonable hand. Same, nothing special, but we'll keep. Yeah, get rid of superfluous land. Okay. No one drop. All right. No one drop here either. Yeah. We have a lot of them in this configuration. <laughs> exactly zero. Rim rock you like a hurricane. All right. Okay, so I do have a two drop as well. We're going to go with Paradise Druid and pass to you. Okay, I will mush you for three. This one's actually close. Um, oh, sorry, I will play this and attack you for three. It's less close now. <laughs> uh, I'll take it. <laughs> You're at 17. You're up. All right. I want to disincentivize the trade with the pre-combat play there. Yeah, we're going to go like this, go like this, and pass to you. Okay. What does that change? Um, huh. That kind of does make me want to just cast this. So let's uh, uh, let's just attack for six. No blocks. All right, eleven. I'm at eleven. No fear, the Ember Cleave. No. Might have just killed you there. <laughs> uh, because it adds two devotion. This would have been a five. This would have been 12, 15. I guess uh, it would have you to two. I had one mana available. For what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you to figure out. Okay. Well, I'm a little confused. Uh, I guess you want to play, probably would just want to play a 4 4 crisis next turn. Um, makes me a little hesitant to play this card because you can attack it now. But if you want to play 4 4 Crisis and you can't attack, so yeah, I think we'll still play the Chandra. Okay. Um, we'll plus it. Bye bye, Torben. That would have been a good one. All right, unfortunately, I got to take two to play this. Oh, that makes we'll, sense. We'll be too. Dream Trawling. You're at nine. Nine to 20? Yep. Yep, pass to you. All right, now we got to hope for good things from this Dream Trawler because our hand is not great. Okay, <laughs> that's a pretty good one. Let's. Uh, Plus. Okay. Xmonty Reveler, we can play this turn. Okay. Let's uh, play a Fervent Champion. Okay. And attack you with all my creatures and target this thing. Okay. So this has got to be an Ember Cleave, I guess. Maybe I'm just dead to that regardless. Pretty sure you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's two, four, six, seven, eight. So normally base eight power plus one is nine. Yeah. So it's, this is 18. Wow. That's quite the combo. Yeah. Yeah. So you can soak up five. That's still 13, gain three. Yeah. I didn't have That's too much 10. else going on. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're this, dead. Is, this is kind of messed up. That is a messed up honestly. combo. And the cards just, both cards are obviously just great yeah. on their own. So yeah. yeah. Is, I can't imagine. Like, Literally just saying it once, I now cannot imagine playing a red deck that does not have four of each of these. Four cards. of each, yeah, 100%. That is. I mean, Embercleave is one card that <clears throat> people were always messing around, but like, well, it's legendary. You don't want to draw too many. It's like, no, it wins the game. You play four <laughs> in a red deck. Yeah. So, uh, no, I, I, I had this same conversation years ago in Legacy <laughs> with Gaia's Cradle and Elves. People yeah. used to not play four. And I was like, yeah, you, you might have a dead card in your hand, but the first one wins through having a dead card, so it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Same thing with Ember Cleave. Like, yeah. Oh, I drew two of them. Okay, one's in my hand. You're dead. <laughs> exactly. Even, even just like this curve. Like if you go this into Annex, attack for three, this next attack is for what? 12, 15? Like the, the 18, if I took two with a breeding pool, yeah. I'm dead. Yeah, <laughs> dead on turn four. Yeah. With three cards. No, Annex is a, a scary magic card in that deck. Oh. Maybe giving Red some new life. Yeah, I mean, I I just I just drafted it for the first time last night and just played like some blue red uh, aggro deck with uh, more leaning on red and the card was just unbelievable. You know, I mean, I'm I'm now thinking about playing it in Chonky Red Pioneer. There you I go. What, what, card, what card gets cut? Do we just not play Chain Warler? Because maybe not. I, I don't know. Maybe but not. Card seems. <laughs> you pioneering in uh, Richmond? I actually, we actually haven't settled yet. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, well, you're getting chonky in either format now, so. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, if, if you're struggling against Azorius Control with Chonky Red, maybe Annex is a card you want to look at. Maybe, maybe. Helps, I mean, it helps you against sweepers, and they, they're really dependent on on Supreme Verdict. Yeah, that, still gets bounced by a little little T, little Teferi, but which is kind of a big T. Yeah. For the Chonky Red deck, but. 
You'll live. Yeah, we'll live. All right, well, while we get shuffled up for our third and possibly final game, you got a question there, Rob? Yes, I do. Uh, so, Ross, since this is a little bit of a bigger red list, why no tectonic giant? Um, well, I will direct specific answers or specific things to Aaron because she was the one who devised the list. But nice cop-out answer. If I, ha- if I had to try to get inside her head, I would say... It's worse than Torbrin, and you don't want that many fours. Yeah. The yeah. fact that Phoenix of Ash also serves as a four mana play sometimes because of escape yeah. means that you really don't want to overload on that spot in your curve. Torbrin is the number one option, and so Tectonic Giant just kind of gets squeezed out. And I mean, like, if uh, Experimental Frenzy is not in the deck, I mean, it's it's a much different deck without Runaway Steamkin and stuff like that. But if that card's not in the deck, you know the four drop slot is already being... Uh, tempted, you know, if that powerful enchantment didn't make the cut, I don't know if the three, what is a three, four giant yeah. that like chooses one of two medium abilities, when right? It gets targeted, you either like get a Chandra trigger, right? Or, yeah. or I think you might get two cards and you choose one, yeah, uh, or you deal three to them, yeah, just not a very, yeah, it's like yeah. it's an okay card, yeah, it's just not on the level of something like Torbrand or Experimental Frenzy if you're lower curve, yeah, or, or yeah. even Escaping Phoenixes, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. All right. Well, we're going to start our game three here. I'm going to be on the play. Oh, come on. Give me some lands. That's enough, I suppose. We're going to keep. This hand looks decent. Needs a little bit of help, but. It's the exact word I would use for my hand, too. <laughs> All right. Decent. Needs a little help. All right. We're going to bottom this and pass to you. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll get some help, too. Okay. Okay. Um, I think given that I am on the draw and I didn't have a one drop, I probably need to interact with this game, so I'm going to keep this on the top. Okay. I'm going to untap, draw, take two, and draw it. Okay. Your turn. So you're at 18. And I have a Rimrock Knight. All righty. You're up. We're going to draw, and that was not a good draw. That was not a good draw at all. Hmm. Well. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. I like yikes. Good <laughs> word. I, if I had to hazard a guess, I would say Corey does not have a third land. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a uh, to debate what I want to do here. All right. Let's just go like this. 4-3, Knight of Autumn. Your turn. 4-3, Knight of Autumn. See what well, this 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 card is just so medium. Like even here, gaining four, blocking a Rimrock Knight, I think is fine, um, but not great. Uh, uh, smash in for three. I'm gonna take it. Fifteen. Fifteen. And I'm gonna lava coil the Paradise Druid. Yep, that's what I was afraid of. That's, that's why I almost contemplated just not casting anything, um, just because I'm so hindered by this now. Now I just have to play defense. I'll say go. So now I'm going to regret putting these counters on, but I was hoping that removal was not the case. Attack for three. I'll block. Yep. Like, pretty happy to make that trade when I have a Chandra. Yep. I will plus and pass the turn. All right. Need a land. Dang it. <laughs> Temple. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll keep this card. Pass to you. Um, let's plus. Okay. We can play that card. Yep. I will play an Annex. Okay. And pass a turn. All right. So it is a 4-3, huh? Yep. Which means when it dies, I will get two satyrs. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. So land five. Um, Got a couple decent plays here. Really, if we take a look at our hand here, these are probably the two main ones. Um. All right, let's go with Tolsmir and fight this. So the wolf is going to die too. You're going to go to 18. Yep. And I will get two satyrs. All right, seems pretty good. Pass to you. They cannot block though. That is true. No protection on the Chandra. That's a neat one. Um. Yeah, unfortunately, I got to keep Chandra under check right now, and that is not a place where you usually want to be. Oh, so I, can, I don't have to cast it immediately, so that's pretty cool. Yep. So let's attack with both now that you don't really want to block. Yep, 16. <laughs> and... I 
think I could get like a stomp somewhere, but I think I'd rather play the annex for my hand as well. Okay. And then just play Bone Crusher. Alrighty. And pass the turn. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna be rough. We got a Nissa. We're gonna tick up on Island. Yep. And do I wanna just double attack at Chandra? I mean, I kind of have to here, but you still just get a ton of tokens. But the tokens can't block, so that will open up some lane to deal with Chandra. But I guess I can just minus seven this turn. Yeah, it's a tough spot. This is definitely a tough spot. Um, I'll attack Chandra with uh, Tolsmir only. Just the Tolsmir. Yep. Um, I think. I would like to trade. Okay. Get my two satyrs. All right. And I have a land for the turn. That's not good enough. Okay, pass to you. Yeah, I just think I'm absolutely toast. <laughs> yeah, you're almost dead. Yeah. That'll kill you. That'll kill me. Uh, so I minus seven this. That'll yeah. deal you seven. Okay. Bring you to nine. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what just I need. You need an ember cleave unless you already have one. Three, six, seven. And you can play any of them for free or something, right? It's not for free. I, I have to pay. But, okay. Uh, but the key is I have Castle on Birth. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is really good <laughs> all these satyrs. So we attack you and pump them. This will be eight, bring you to nine. And I can cast either this or Stomp or yep, yep. whatever I want to do. Okay, that's GG. Uh, I, I drew another Bone Crusher. So even if uh, I hit Didn't even minus, have the cleave? No. Oh, yeah. Didn't have the cleave, didn't need. Had the castle. Okay, okay. Uh, I really wanted you to double attack so I could just make four satyrs. And... Yeah, well, that's the thing is if I double attacked, you already on board had six tokens to kill Nyssa. You know, I mean, just the fact that I couldn't pressure Chandra, missing the land drops where I took two turns off, just mm -hmm. impossible to come back. Kept a two lander with Paradise Druid and like a lot of good fives. And then, like, Night of Autumn, but, you know, that's just what happens uh, with round decks when you don't have these nice middle cards to kind of smooth out, not Elspeth Conqueror's Death, but Teferi mainly, but Teferi, maybe on the play, I should have probably, I, I could have brought it back in. Yeah, but it might be better in this matchup than it normally is against red yeah. decks, because I'm a little bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, I could definitely see that, especially against Annex looked really good. Yeah. Teferi is one of your better cards against Annex specifically. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, we're we're a little early, but I think maybe let's uh, move on to match two. We got a lot of exciting matches planned. Um, yeah, and matches that are going to go a little long. You want to take a question before we move on? Oh, yeah. Let's take two questions before we move on, if you got them. All right. Um, so the first one is not about this format, but okay. uh, looking forward to modern. One, yeah. are you planning on playing any next week? Uh, in prep for the open and two what do you think are the top decks with theros beyond death do you think it's going to impact the format in, in a significant way well i think for part a um we do plan on at some point i think we're both pretty excited about this is having a richmond battle a standard pioneer modern uh 1v1 so we'll be seeing a little bit of all the formats on here we'll definitely get in some modern next week yeah um, might not do a full modern show but it'll yep. get at least sprinkled in because it, there's not a ton of impact from the set mm -hmm. as there you know rarely is modern doesn't get it uh, There's a ton of impact from just the bannings. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, but there is, I think, a significant impact from Heliod. Yeah. Because while I think Heliod and Ballista is pretty overrated in Pioneer. Yeah. Uh, you know, the white Devotion Shell, it's going in. They're okay, but I don't think they're great decks. Mm -hmm. The the Abzan Company deck that top for the challenge, Modern Challenge on Moto last weekend, was yeah. really good. Yeah. Uh, I wrote my article about Heliod Ballista and really uh, explaining why I think that deck is really well built uh, and well conceived. Uh, so you can check that out. That article is live now on StarCityGames.com. Nice. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I do think that deck is quite good. Um, I know Zan Saeb from Team Lotus Box has been streaming a little bit with it. So it has his uh, stamp of approval at least somewhat. Okay. Um, but pretty traditional band com or Abzan Company shell with cool. Heliod, which you can hit off of it. Spike Feeder, which combos with Heliod mm. to get infinite life. And Ranger Captain of Eos, which finds Walking Ballista. 
turns it gives you devotion for Heliod. It like it just all works together so nicely. I can imagine we'll probably see that on uh, oh, yeah. on the show next oh, week. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that <laughs> I think that deck is is very good and will shake yeah. up a little bit because I think it's better than Devoted Devastation, yeah. which is a deck that was already starting to see a little bit of play. You know, Kyle Bogamus is champion that deck. Yep. Uh, and I think this deck is better than that and will really uh, cement creature combo as a pillar in the, the modern metagame. Yeah. And that really hurts the big mana decks that everybody's talking about. Mm -hmm. So uh, th that's the major impact I see from yeah. Paris Beyond Death. Yeah, no, and I think uh, I think Modern's going to be really shaken up right now. Honestly, all the formats, Standard, Pioneer, and Modern, I think are all really fun and really healthy right now. Really good time for a team event. It's we, really good we time. Kinda, we kind of lucked out here on the SCG tour. Really no good kidding. time on that. The bannings plus, you know, the new set having just enough uh, implications into all three formats. It's going to be a fun SCG, and it's going to be a fun next week, so you best believe we, we got some Modern coming. Rob, one more if you got one. Yeah. Um... So when you're building your red decks, people were asking about why there wasn't any Steamkin in your deck. Is it because you're a little higher curve? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Steamkin is the card. You want to be playing multiple spells on turn three if you can to really start ramping it up. Get it to three counters, at least by turn, on turn four yeah. pretty consistently. This deck doesn't do that. This deck curves pretty traditionally. You know, one, two, three, sometimes not even a one drop. Doesn't really rely on having that. And that, that higher curve really does make Steamkin a lot worse. Yep. And, I mean, without uh, uh, Experimental Frenzy, those two really go hand in hand. You know, they've been causing chaos in uh, our standard extended modern whatever. Like low curves. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I just think it's a different deck. You know, it's, uh, that's Mono Red. Uh, that's Mono Red Beatdown. We're yes. Chonky now. Yeah, let's like. Can we change the name in the header to Chonky Red? <laughs> sure. Change the name just for this last second before we go to commercial, yes, exactly. and then yeah, just just so uh, we get the Todd approval here. Yeah, just to mention, this is definitely a, this is a Chonky Red deck. <laughs> All right, everyone. So we are gonna head to our second round. Ross got me in the two sideboard of games, and I got you in the pre board. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but every day here on versus. Long. It was. Uh, it always is. I, so well, I think <laughs> what that means is I'm going to win every match because it's standard and normally I lose every match. So yeah, yeah, it's not looking good for you. A boy can dream. That's for <laughs> sure. So stick, stay tuned. We're going to take a short five minute break. I'm going to be bringing you my take on the Aristocats list that uh, I know you tried on Tuesday with a shell. I'm trying something a bit different. Uh, we're going to see how that doing. And what do you got up against I'm me? I'm going to be playing Grixis mid range. Oh, uh, so cool little list uh, with uh, the, the, Rakdos, Elder Dragon, and Lazav. Kind of get some synergy there. Good removal, <laughs> good planeswalkers. <laughs> One quick thing I got to bring up. I played I played your list uh, that you're going to play next round yesterday just on stream for a little bit of fun. And my opponent on the play went turn two Hushbringer, and I just go the red-black Titan. I'm like, okay, attack for six. You know, you don't have to sacrifice it then. So then when I attack, they still have to discard. So I just had a two mana six six when my opponent led with a hushbringer. I was like, not a good, uh, not a good call. So what you're saying is you should play bo a four of each of the titans and just four hushbringers in your own deck. Well, that was their deck. Their deck was hushbringer Uro. Oh. So they'd go hushbringer into your into Uro. It, it's it's straight a meme, but it's a pretty good meme. So uh, well, you you renamed them. Oh yeah, they conceded on turn yeah. three. <laughs> you you, uh, you me it's like a story topper. You meme topped them. I know, I know. It's 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 what I do best. So. All right everybody stay tuned we're gonna take a short five minute break and we'll be right back with round two here on versus live <laughs> 